Hey everybody, Brian from the Cabinet Joint here. I cannot believe it's 2024 and we have been shooting um, various assembly and uh, product videos for going on 11 years now. So when I look at the old ones and see how young I look, it's kind of embarrassing. But um, what we're realizing as we kind of evolve our practice of shooting videos is we've got some old ones out there that are probably aren't as accurate as we like them to be. And one of our most popular videos is the one you're looking at now, how to attach a drawer front to a drawer box. And in the old method we used, trying to make it homeowner friendly, we used double back 3M tape where you'd put some tape on the front of the drawer box and stick the drawer front on once you got it lined up and shut the drawer and then run your screws in the back. Not a bad way to do it, but as we've evolved our practices in the shop and learned our customer base better, we realize our homeowner clientele is a pretty capable group of people. And so we wanna show you the way we do it in the shop. It gives you a faster result and you don't get that crumb catcher on the back of the drawer, between the drawer box and the drawer front because that 3M sticky tape was maybe a 16th or a 32nd wide. So you did have a little bit of a space between the drawer front and drawer box. So we're gonna go ahead and show you the new method. And what it relies on is some known dimensions, depending on whether you're using inset cabinetry, which is what this is, full overlay or partial A overlay drawer fronts. That's gonna dictate which dimensions I give you or which ones you use that I'm about to give you in the rest of the video. And it relies heavily on the adjustability that's built into the Bloom hardware. So you've got the left and right adjustability with the wheels, you have up down adjustability with the little levers under here, and you've got some in out adjustability. So um, just pay attention to the video and really focus on the part that is your overlay or inset. You know, those are the dimensions you're gonna to wanna to use. So let's get started. And because this is maybe a little more of a complicated video, you can slow it down, you can rewind it, whatever you gotta do. But remember, your cabinet coach is always there to help walk you through it. Let's get started, everybody. Okay, everybody, before we get started on showing you this new method of installing a drawer front on a drawer box, I wanna kinda emphasize why we're um, taking this new approach. What we're doing is we're starting with knowns, depending on whether the job is inset, full overlay, or partial overlay. We're starting with knowns based on us knowing where the doors and drawer fronts sit on the front frame. The old method of sticking it on is, is probably more homeowner friendly to use double back tape. I'm, I'm gonna say it's probably more homeowner friendly, but we don't like the end result as much. And now that we've evolved and we feel like our customer base is evolving, we like this approach better. So again, it starts with knowns and it's predicated on our knowledge that these drawer boxes, glides and um, the orange clips are adjustable, left, right, up, down, and then we can tilt them from the back. So with all those adjustable functions of this, we can kind of null out or, or um, fine tune our adjustment once we put the drawer front on the drawer box, put it into the opening, we can fine tune things with the adjustments that already come native on the drawer glide hardware. So I'm gonna start with inset. This is an inset job. So I'm gonna show you how we do it on inset and then I'm gonna come back and extrapolate some measurements that you would use if your job happens to be full overlay or partial overlay. Okay, so on inset, every door and drawer front is always inset on the opening. So the gaps are always the same. When I say gap, I'm talking about the distance from the bottom of the drawer box to that opening is always the same. And it's a half an inch. So what we do is we take our tape measure. You're gonna need a couple tools, tape measure, a pencil, I'll get into some screws in a minute and a couple of drills, one that's got a bit in it to drive whatever screw you're driving, and one with a 764 drill bit or something in that neighborhood, something close to that. And really the screw or the uh, drill bit you use is determined by what screw you're using and the diameter of it. So you just pick your drill bit based on your screw size. So what I'm gonna do on all my inset is I'm gonna take a measurement of a half an inch up and strike a line. I already struck my line there. I'm not gonna make you watch me do that. And then I just use my finger. You can use a straight edge if you want, but I'm just gonna make a line on the bottom of the drawer front. And you're gonna say, well, why are you doing that? You won't see the line, the drawer box covers it. And while I'm doing that on inset, you gotta be very careful. This drawer front can look the same front and back, but you'll notice that there's a bias on the edge profile. It's kind of canted backwards. The, sh the narrower part, this side in this case, is the back of the drawer. So you wanna make sure you're not gonna drive the screws into the front of your drawer front. Very easy to do when it's a slab like this job is. So face down, drawer face down. I've got my half inch line. And now what I'm gonna do is take my drawer box, set it on the drawer front, and line that line up with the bottom edge of my drawer box. Left and right, because it's inset, the drawer front and the drawer box are almost the exact same width. I can just catch a fingernail on either side. So you can buy eye it. You don't need a jig or a tape measure to get the left and right. Just line it up so I can run my thumbnail on both sides equally and I'm lined up on my line at the bottom, okay? Once I have that, I'm gonna 
turn the box around off camera here and I'll show you how to put the actual screws in. Okay, so all I've done here, folks, is spun this whole arrangement around so you can see inside. I've still got my bottom of my drill box lined up with my half inch mark and um, I've got my edges lined up so I've got just my fingernail. Now what we're gonna do here is take a screw and what we like, we'll put a picture of the box of screws that we use on screen for you. It's made by GRK, you can get them at Lowe's in the hardware aisle, no problem. It's an inch and a quarter long. What we like about it is it's got a big flat cap head on it. So you can't overdrive the screw by accident and have it countersink into the wood and then by accident poke the, the uh, screw tip through the front of your drawer box or drawer front. You want this to bury itself and still be well inside your drawer front so you don't come through your finished surface. So inch and a quarter with a cap screw, it has a nice hard stopping point. Now, what I'm gonna stress here is, <clears throat> this is a slab drawer front, so I can put my screws anywhere I want in here. I like to put them right up on the edges and the corners because that will clear any knobs or handles. If I've got a big cup pole or a bar pole in here, I won't have those screws for my hardware interfere with my mounting screws I'm about to put in. Um, if it's a five piece drawer front, like a matching Albany drawer front with a floating center panel, especially if it's full overlay, you've got to get those screws way up here in the corner because you want to get the screw into the framing of the door, not the panel. Okay, so be very careful if you're doing full overlay and it's a, a five piece drawer front that you want to get those screws way up in the corner. Still going to do that on inset, but because the drawer is this wide, my framing's in here and I can put the screw anywhere in here and I'll catch framing. Not the case with overlay, the framing on the drawer, drawer front is hanging way out here, so we've got to be very careful. But I have a slab and I have inset, so this is pretty straightforward. And I'm gonna do four screws, one on top. And what we don't, don't wanna do is we don't want to um, overdrive, so make sure you have this screw bit, drill bit, is set so that you won't go all the way through the front of the drawer box, or the drawer front, rather. So we put a screw there, and I'll probably just set, I'll just set one on each side and then put a screw in, and then we can do the others. All right, grab a screw. We'll get some close-ups of this operation. Tighten that one up. This will just keep everything from moving. And now I can come back and nothing will shift on me. I can come back and do my second holes and put it in. So I'll do that off camera, and then I'll show you how it goes in and how we adjust the drawer to get our gaps just right. Okay, to summarize where we're at, I've got my fingernail, I'm inset, so I have my fingernail of width on both sides. I'm honoring my half inch between the bottom of the drawer front and the bottom of the drawer box back here. Got my four screws in, and now what I want to kind of focus on is the adjustability. When I put this drawer in, it's probably not going to fit exact. We're inset, so I've got to dial in my, my 3 30 seconds gaps all the way around. There's two little levers on your drawer front, or your uh, drawer brackets here, these orange release levers. These right here, there's one on each side. When you push it back, there's a little um, elevator here that raises the drawer front. So you wanna move these in at the same rate and you can dial your elevation in that way. So we're gonna start with these all the way pulled forward, which means the drawer is at its lowest point, and then we can raise it from there. These wheels here on the left and right side of the orange cams move the drawer box left and right. So if I notice that my gap is different on this side than on that side, I can spin the wheels and I can move the whole drawer over left and right. And then on the back of the drawer, if I notice for some reason that my drawer front is not sitting at a perfect plane, maybe it's a little bit in at the top and a little out at the bottom or flush at the bottom, I can tip it so that the back of the drawer lifts up and now I'm flush at the top and the bottom. And that adjuster is back here. It's a little gray dial and you, maybe you can see it in the camera. You can see the little hook that is in the back of your drawer box, that's going up and down. So we're gonna start with it all the way at the down position, which is all the way out. That's the way it comes to you. And you can raise that if need be. We rarely have to touch those. So what I'm gonna do, I haven't tested this yet, but I'm sure it's gonna go in. We're gonna go ahead and put this in the way we normally do. Slide our drawer box in until it clicks. So we're clicked in, she opens nice. And I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but I'm tight at the bottom and I have a pretty big gap up here. Okay, I'll see if uh, cameraman Nick can kind of get a little closer on that. Got a big gap up here and I'm almost tight at the bottom. That's by design. We want to have the, bottom, the drawer kind of towards the bottom so now we can adjust it the way we want. You can always go up, you can't go down. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to slide my adjusters on left and right. I'm going to push them in a, a notch or two. 
And now you can see I'm, I'm a little high here and just about perfect there. So I'm gonna back this one out, one click. And now I'm dialing it in, still a little tight to the bottom. I can go up a little more. Oh, getting much better here. Okay, so now I like my top and bottom gap. Now I've got to work on my left to right gap. I'm a little tighter here than I am here, so I can spin the adjusters. And you can see I've closed this gap up. So you can just dial it in that way any way you want. I'm gonna put the other two drawers on and then come back and show you uh, how to do overlay. And it's gonna be much the same, but there's some different dimensions you have to work with on overlay and partial overlay than on inset. It's not quite as straightforward. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I've got all three of my inset drawer fronts on. Before I put this top one in, is something I didn't mention before on the adjustability. These tracks slide in and out. There's a little mounting screw right here. And that's in a separate video, a little mounting screw right here. When you loosen that up, the track will slide fore and aft by an inch. What you wanna do is line the front of that up with the very front of the first hole you see, the first open space here. And that's about the right dimension. But if you put your drawer in and you see that it's sticking proud or it's recessed in, you just gotta move the whole track, both sides. Move the track in or out until you get that flush. But again, just get it till you see the half moon of that um, first hole just peeking through, and that's usually the right setting that we found in the shop. So I'm gonna put this last one in, and then we'll go ahead and talk about overlay and partial overlay. We've got a mock up here. Uh, I don't have any overlay jobs in the shop, but I'm gonna talk you through the dimensions. All right, so what we're gonna go over now is full overlay, inch and a quarter full overlay cabinet door, drawer fronts on your drawer box, okay? So remember inset, you had just a little bit hanging over. On full overlay, you're gonna have a lot of drawer front hanging past. And you're gonna have a distance below um, each drawer box to get it right. So I'm gonna start with the bottom drawer because it's different on the bottom drawer than it is on the top drawers above. Reason being on the bottom drawer for full overlay, the drawer front hangs all the way over this piece of framing and is flush with the front frame. And then these ones only hang past by a quarter of an inch, okay? So different dimensions for this than the other two. On your bottom drawer, it's two inches from here to the bottom of the drawer front, two inches on every base cabinet except desk bases. Desk bases are a little weird because they have a little short flush toe. It's inch and three quarter on desk bases, but every other base cabinet, it's two inches from here to here, an inch and seven sixteenths from the side of the drawer to the side of the drawer front, okay? You're gonna have a lot of material in your drawer front hanging past inch and seven sixteenths. If you want, you can make a little block of wood and use it to line up the edge of the drawer front with the side of the drawer box. If your piece of wood is an inch and seven sixteenths, you can just Slap it there when you're level here, or you're even here, and you're against the side of your drawer, you know you're good. Okay, so I'm gonna run through them again. Bottom drawer is two inches, inch and seven sixteenths, inch and seven sixteenths. These two are 11 sixteenths, 11 sixteenths on the bottom, and the same inch and seven sixteenths left and right, okay? The only time on full overlay it gets a little crazy is if, say you had a blind corner cabinet, or another better example would be a vanity cabinet where you're sharing doors and drawer fronts with one vertical style and I got a drawer here and a door here or a drawer and a drawer. Your two drawers on the top are sharing an inch and a half piece of framing and so you're gonna to wanna to honor the inch and seven sixteenths on one side, but it's gonna hang past a lot less on the side that shares that piece of framing. It'll make more sense when you run into the situation, your, your cabinet coach can walk you through it. That's full overlay. Partial overlay is a cinch. Uh, gotta read my dimensions on that one. We don't do much of it. Partial overlay is an inch from the bottom. So this is one inch instead of two that it was on the full overlay. It's one inch. Your left and right sides are 11 sixteenths and 11 sixteenths, okay? Again, one inch at the bottom, 11 sixteenths, 11 sixteenths. And you can do the same thing. Make a little 11 sixteenths spacer to make sure you're lining your sides up. And the process of screwing the drawer box to the drawer front's identical. Just remember what I mentioned earlier, if you're doing full overlay and your drawer front is hanging way past, you don't have much framing to catch. So you're gonna wanna be right into the corner here at an angle to catch that framing and not crack your panel, okay? It should be obvious when you're doing it, but you just wanna make sure you're catching good solid wood on an angle on those framing pieces. And that's about it. It's, uh, I don't think it's as easy as the sticky tape method was, but it's the right way to do it. It's the way a cabinet shop would do it probably. And you don't have that gap, that crumb catcher you get when you had that sticky tape in here that was holding the drawer box and the drawer front just slightly apart. So this is the way we do it in our shop and we make jigs for it and we can fly right through. This video probably made it look harder than it really is. Once you have those dimensions nailed, you'll just start cycling through your drawer fronts and drawer boxes pretty quickly. 
you have any questions, call your cabinet coach. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, everybody.